was good. We saw um, a lot of deliverance. We saw how important it was in hearing God as we ministered individually to the people and hearing his voice for that particular person, how important that is. So we're going to spend a little time on hearing God's voice. So we know God has spoken from the beginning. Anybody who says that he doesn't speak to his people anymore, you need to not listen to them. Amen. He's never going to stop speaking to his people because he's a father. He's a relational God, and that's evident from Genesis to Revelation. Yeah. Um, yeah. Families communicate, ideally. And it may be true that there were causes at times when no new revelation was recorded or given to the prophets to his people, such as when Israel was in bondage to Egypt for 400 years, or the 400 years between Malachi and John the Baptist. Uh, but there's no clear indication that he wasn't speaking to anyone at all. It just wasn't re any new recorded uh, prophetic word. Um, his previous words, of course, still carried. I think I mentioned before that if you're trying to hear from God on something and you haven't heard anything new and you feel like God is silent, then you go back to the last thing he said. Amen. Amen. And if you haven't fulfilled that part, do that, and then something new is going to come. One step at a time. He's very patient. Um, for his own sovereign re reasons before Christ came, he gave revelation when he gave it, and then he waited a while to give it again. Probably for those reasons, you know, just do what I said. Um, 1 Samuel 3, 1, the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days, and there was no widespread revelation. So there were periods of time when he wasn't directly speaking. But um, before Christ, God often spoke in visions, dreams, by angels, and through his prophets, and he still does that today. <laughs> with Moses and Abraham he is said to have been spoke, spoke to them face to face uh, that's the kind of, of relationship he really wants the relationship he had in the garden that he's trying to restore now and now after Christ that's what we have with the Holy Spirit that one on one face to face talking with God again um and you can read about that in Genesis chapter 15, 1 and 4. Um, when John came preparing the way for Jesus, God picked up back a lot up, picked back up with a lot of information. And then when Jesus began to speak, then it all flowed again. And Jesus explained and fulfilled all the previous words pointed to him. In John 5, 39, he said, You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me. In Luke 24, 27, when he was speaking with the disciples on the road to Emmaus, he said, and at the beginning, at the beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So remember, it's not Old Testament, New Testament. It's all the word of God which is Jesus, the living word of God made flesh from beginning to end. You cannot discount anything before because he fulfilled it all. Um, so now when the help Jesus sent the Holy Spirit, he speaks now more than ever all the time. We just have to have ears to hear. And he was probably so excited to finally have that communication restored that he wanted all of them. We're still in the unfolding of that since we're in the age of grace and we're not in the fullness of the one-on-one -on -one communication that we will have when Jesus returns. But it's certainly greater than it ever was before Jesus came. So the main way God speaks is through his written word, the Bible. Any word you hear from God will never contradict his written word. That's your number one discernment key right there. Amen. And if you don't know the word, you're going to be deceived. So if anything you hear, you've got to check it against the word of God. I want to add, because you got a plethora of YouTube prophets, YouTube apostles uh, that are merely on there, and I run into this a lot with these fringe uh, deliverance people that are not submitted to a local body of believers. Uh, we will never fully grasp God's word because part of that revelation comes through your local church. And if 
we're not submitted to, if I'm not submitted to Brother Larry, if I'm not submitted to Bo Johnson, if I'm not submitted to the elders of this church, then then I am operating in pride. God resists the proud against I seen somebody uh, make a comment about this prophetess Celeste that is just wild and out there with stuff. She don't go to church anywhere. She's not hooked up to any kind of thing. She's all about YouTube clips. And what happens is when these people, they may be gifted prophetically, but they get addicted to the YouTube algorithm and they feel like they've got to release a prophetic word every day so they can get the clicks and get the revenue from YouTube. Come on now. So we need to make sure that our words are flowing through. It's why I say over and over to eat at your table, not at um, XYZ tables, not at this YouTube table. Yeah, the word does um, tell us to know those who labor among you. Um, you can't just take somebody's word for it. And social media is real easy for us to scroll and click. And there's a lot of great stuff there. And we learn from it. And hey, don't reinvent the wheel. If somebody's already studied that, you can listen to that. But you're still going to weigh what they're saying against the word of God. And you cannot go to them first before you're going to the word and the spirit saying Lord, what do you want to say to me today you know if he directs you to a word online then fine but that is not supposed to be our direction and our focus amen and if you are listening to someone you're on your own get with me or get with uh dana get with marilyn there's some people out there that they may look they said many false prophets many that means a lot of that means a, a lot. That means probably from on the YouTube side of things, probably most. So get with us and we'll give you some direction because you got people that are talking to angels, which we're forbidden to talk. We're not we don't talk to angels. We don't command angels. We don't engage with some principalities and warfare. And all that stuff is out there, especially in the in, in what we do. So weigh it against the word. If you're unsure, check with your leaders and trusted people of God um, who have studied and walked with God a long time. Long time. Um, so the other thing is if it contradicts God's nature. Amen. Um, to know the nature of God, of course, you have to know the word of God, but you also learn it by experience. When the names of God were revealed in the Bible, the Lord who sees me, the Lord is my banner. These were all revelation of who God is in the given circumstance. Oh, man, so, you know, you have to, you learn the character of God as you walk with him by faith. And he works with you through different um, things you go through, you know. I wouldn't have known him as healer if I hadn't been sick and I was healed. Or I wouldn't have known him as provider if I had been in lack and he provided. You understand? So the character of God has to be what you're looking at too. Like, is this a condemning nature? Is this bringing shame? Is this bringing fear? That's no, not God. Okay? Um, so that's why I did a little attachment of God is, if y'all saw that in the, um, if he sent it, um, but I just went through a lot of scriptures that I had where it describes the nature of God and of course there's a ton more but that's just some of them. Um, okay, so Deuteronomy 8.3, you know he says he humbled you and allowed you to hunger and fed you with manna which you did not know nor did your fathers know that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. So we have to live by God's word. That is how we survive anything we go through. Let me check the word on that. Let me check the word on that. Let me find a promise for that. I need direction. I'm going to go to the word. You know, that's how you're going to live through everything. And I have a lot of scriptures to kind of support that in the notes. The Holy Spirit is the one who reveals Jesus in the word. Who makes the word come alive to us, applies it to us personally, and who makes us understand the word of God. This is why someone who is not saved can read the Bible like a book and get nothing out of it. He reminds us of what Jesus said, 
and he shows us secrets and hidden treasures in the word. Um, and there's a lot of scriptures that talk about that too. I love how the Holy Spirit brings to our remembrance. He says, um, where is that? John 16, he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. And uh, of course, the one where he says he brings to him, yeah, John 14, 26, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things, all things, oh, and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Can you imagine the disciples trying to remember everything Jesus said for three and a half years? Yeah, that's really and the Bible says that he that that there wouldn't be enough books in the world to contain everything that he said and did in those three years. I don't remember what that scripture is. I think it's in John. But the Holy Spirit will bring to your remembrance what he said. Now you do you do have to read it. You have to read what he said and keep reading it so it's in your memory and it's in your heart, it's in your mind. But when you're going through something, the Holy Spirit is going to bring that to your remembrance. Remember, he said, da da da. Remember, I said, da da da. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I love the, um, the fact that he does that and I love the fact that he is willing to reveal secrets. Yeah. Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those which are revealed belong to us and our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. And there's a lot of scriptures about finding secrets in God's word. And, you know, God's word is eternal and unfolding, and we will never know it all. There's just always lots of things to peel back and find in there. And it's great when we can hear other people who have picked that apart and, and God has shown them things and we can learn from that. But the more you dig, the more he's going to show you. Um, so we've got to understand, this is the most important thing I learned about God's word is that a great majority of it was prophecy and that God's world where it is ever unfolding, revealing itself generation after generation, in age after age, applying to 2,000 years ago, but also applying to now. Because it's spirit, it's not flesh, and in the spirit, things can apply spiritually, even though they may have applied naturally at one time, they carry spiritual meaning. You know, the the showbread that the priest had in the in the temple, that's a picture of Jesus, the bread of life, you know, and in understanding the types and shadows, that's when I really understood the word of whoa, you know, it's way more than just okay, so they had bread in the altar, you know, because that's what God said for them to do. No. There's way more to it. Uh, Hebrews 4, 6 through 11 shows us an example of how his word applied several times in history. I think that was in the video. But that goes for prophecy also. Um, many prophecies had fulfillment for that time and will have a similar fulfillment in the future. Most prophecies have more than one time fulfillment. There are many types of shadows in the word that point to things to come, point to Jesus, point to the gospel. And many patterns repeat. You know, Jesus himself said, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the Son of Man. That's just one example. But Ecclesiastes 1.9 says, that which has been is what will be, and that which is done is what will be done, and there is nothing new under the sun. So God sees everything in one time frame, in beginning to end. I think it's Isaiah, he says he declares the end from the beginning. And so we look at the beginning for the pattern to the end. And he'll reveal secrets Amen. in those in those beginning patterns. If you see in Genesis, you know, and in Exodus, there were plagues then, there's going to be plagues later, you know. So seeing the word that way really changed my focus about how to apply it, that it's eternal, it's all-encompassing, and continues to unfold. 
Um, the voice of God. Okay. First Kings 19, we all know this scripture about Elijah in the cave and he heard the still small voice. It wasn't in the, the big loud earthquake and whirlwind and fire and all this. The obvious, it was in the intimate and secret place of prayer or alone time with him. It was in the moment of sorrow or confusion. Those times are mostly going to be the still small voice. Okay, but that means you gotta be quiet. Okay, you have to turn off the noise. And when you're going through something, believe me, it's very noisy. So you cannot discount pulling away from all that stuff and getting alone with God. I have to hear the voice of the Lord or I'm not going to make it. You know, if you don't have that clear direction like Elijah did, he just stayed in the cave and just died. That's what he wanted to do. He thought he was all alone in this, and they were coming to kill him, and he was done. But God met him where he was. So there's still small voice, uh, but there's also the audible voice. Has anybody ever heard the audible voice of God? Once. Yeah. Okay. So it happens, but it's not as common. But it does happen. And there's some examples of that in the scriptures listed there. I just don't have time for that. Um, but there is a little secret there. I kind of put a few scriptures about how he speaks in thunder. Yeah, and um, I don't really have time to go into all that, but there's a secret there. He answers us in the secret place of thunder, Psalm 81, 7. And, you know, when they... You, you'll see lots of scriptures that point to his voice like thunder. So there are times when he will speak and it will be boom. <laughs> like you can't ignore it. Even when it's a still small yes. voice, it's still Can you thunder. hear it authoritative? Yeah, it's still thunder through your. It's like I think that some of the most impactful times of correction for my dad isn't when he was hollering, but when I knew he meant what he said. Yes. It thundered through my phone. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so God's voice can be quiet, gentle, compassionate, but also very authoritative and firm and stern, like a good father would be. Um, and that's going to depend on the situation. Um, so a lot of times Jesus said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. So I frequently pray, Lord, give me ears to hear. Yeah. Because there's plenty of other things competing for what you're listening to. Um, in Matthew 11, 15, he said that, um, and he always followed up with many parables yes. with that word. So again, with explaining a natural, uh, using a natural thing to explain a spiritual thing, um, God does that all the time. And you'll see his voice that way. Um, Deuteronomy 29 4 yet the Lord has not given you a heart to perceive and eyes to see and ears to hear to this very day rebellion stops up our ears and dulls our perception of him it is what it is if you are not hearing God and you are clearly in rebellion somewhere repent Amen. and then you can hear him again clean out that wax Zechariah 7 11, but they refused to heed, shrugged their shoulders, and stopped their ears so they could not hear. And there's a lot of other scriptures pointing to that too. Um, 2 Timothy 4, the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and yes. they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. We are living in that, obviously. So, uh, Proverbs 23, 12 says, Apply your heart to instruction and your ears to words of knowledge. That means you have to do something about this. You have to apply your hearing. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the Word. I'm going to seek the Lord on this. And I'm going to do what He said. I'm applying my ear to, and my heart to instruction. That will help you open up your ears. That's part of what fasting is, is hearing God clearly, is you're focusing on what God has said instead of everything else. You're denying yourself and your flesh so that your spirit man can hear clearly from God. 
you know, I think it's important, uh, you know, more than time, when your mind is fresh, you got approximately 1,400 new neurons to point in the right direction and to, to literally change because the, the, the spiritual reality is always uh, backed up by uh, physical science. Uh, so when you and your mind is not just spiritual, but it's physical also in the morning, uh, listening to the word, and then also uh, binding any spirits that may be trying to distract or, or to cause distract or to cause distraction, uh, making sure that you don't go down that social social media rabbit hole before you get into God's word and pray and stuff like that. I know that. Those are some of my struggles, so I figure if I'm struggling, somebody else probably is too. Yes. So, never discount the paper Bible. Amen. <laughs> yes, right. Yeah. Because it's too easy. Satan is the prince of the power of the air for him to distract with the screen. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's harder to do when there's just papers in front of you. Okay. Um, okay. All right, so God will also speak through authority. This is usually if you're not listening, but not always. Sometimes he'll just speak um, through your husband, through your father, your natural father, your natural husband, through your pastor, obviously. Anyone who's in spiritual authority over you, spiritual authority. Sometimes he'll do natural authority like your boss or whatever, but you have to have ears to hear that. You know, everybody is flesh. They're all um, susceptible to straying into the flesh. We see that with Peter. You know, one minute he's confessing revelation from the Father, the literal next minute he's rebuking Jesus in the flesh. So you have to have the ear to hear God through someone else, and it's going to hit your heart, and you're going to be like, wow, that was the Lord. You know, um, listen to that. He's speaking through authority. Um, 1 Samuel 3, you know, we see that with the baby. Well, he wasn't a baby. He was a little boy. And he didn't know how to hear the voice of God. So I teach, you know, kids, the, the main way that God is going to speak to young kids while they're not quite at the age of accountability is through their parents. And if those parents are walking with God, then they'll be able to hear God. If they're not walking through with God, they're going to misconstrue the voice of God and misconstrue the fatherly aspect of God. So it's our responsibility to, that's why God really stressed, you know, to teach them in the ways of the Lord. They have to have the foundation until they're old enough to seek him on their own and recognize his voice for themselves. Samuel kept thinking that it was the priest calling him. And it took the priest a couple of times to realize that was God. And so he instructed him, if you hear him again, say, here I am, Lord. But he used the priest's voice. I can, it didn't sound like some strange man. It sounded like the priest's voice to say no. So if children hear something, I hope, Mom, I thought I heard you in my dream, or I thought I heard you say, you recognize that was the Lord, honey, and da da da. Um, I, I remember several times, some, the Lord wakes me up in different ways when he does wake me up. You know, I, like I told you the other day, it woke me up with the alarm. But, <laughs> Or no, it was the uh, old school telephone ring. Yeah. yeah. Um, but one time I heard my husband's voice calling my name. But he was sound asleep. But I clearly heard it like it was natural sound. Yeah. So I knew it was the Lord because he is my spiritual husband. Anyway. Um, so all through John 10, we read about how his sheep know his voice. You don't have to be afraid that you're going to be deceived by a false voice. Don't live in fear. If you belong to him, you're going to know his voice. Yes? Uh, I, so I was struggling with hearing God's voice when I, when I first got saved. And I remember, I was like, I'm, just, I'm so afraid that I'm going to miss it. I'm so afraid that you're going to say something, and, and I'm not going to know what you're trying to communicate. And he said, son, I'll never let you miss it. Yeah. He said, I'll never let you miss your burning bush. God knows what level we're at. 
where we are in our maturity, he knows how to speak. Just like you know how to speak to your one-year-old is different how you speak to your 10-year-old, okay? Trust him, he's a father. Yeah. He'll speak to you where you're at. Okay, so um, he's a good shepherd. My sheep know my voice and they follow me. So if you're not following, you're probably going to get snatched by a wolf. Okay? You're still his sheep, but the sheep that wanders is going to get in trouble. Stay right next to the master where you can hear his voice. You'll be all right. Amen. Um, again, I think I mentioned this before. The voice you're hearing may be somebody familiar. It may be somebody close to you that even loves you. And they may be giving you direction or counsel, but it may be in the flesh. It may, just like Peter, it may not be connected with God's will for you in this situation. You know, you have to be patient with people and have ears to hear that. But whatever they're saying, if it doesn't line up with what God said to you and about you, you're going to have to treat that as a stranger's voice. Amen. And I think with prophetic words, we're all guilty of subjecting our thoughts, opinions, worldview, or whatever, whatever we've been through, into that prophetic word over that person. So we have to be sure of that too. I know when uh, uh, Kendall Crew looked at Josh Lockhart and he said he was going to own that dealership, I immediately knew in my heart that he had missed it. Uh, he's, he, Maybe seeing Josh owning a business, uh, which Josh is owning a business. He's a great Tyler Moore man. But he, but he seen the, the shirt and he imposed that on him. So that that we're not going to practice that kind of prophetic words. So um, when you're receiving a word from God, you know, we prophesy in part, we know in part. He doesn't always give a super clear in a picture if you just get a picture just speak what the picture is don't do a whole interpretation unless god really impresses that to you strongly just say like i see blah 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 well uh, friday night when the lady from uh, uh solid rock was up here for deliverance after after god left the Lord told me to pray for her left back and heal. And that was one of the pivotal points of her knowing that God loved her because she suffered with severe left hip and leg pain. Wow. I didn't know why the Lord told me, but I told the ladies, I said, place your hands and pray for her, for her left side and, hip and all that. And that was like, she's on the Lord. How does he know that? Well, I didn't know that. All I heard was pray for her hip. Yeah. I didn't know she had pain, but that increased her faith enough to know that God loved her and cared about her and was concerned about her physical pain so he could heal her emotional pain. But before the emotional pain could be healed, the demon would have to be that way. But, so that's a good example of what we said right now. Well, that was a little more direct word and obvious, yeah. but um, if he says, do this, do it. <laughs> if he says, say this, say it. But if it's a little more vague and you're just getting kind of a picture or an impression, that's what we're going to talk about, okay? Because it's not always clear cut. Um, so I, I just mentioned a little bit about the character of God's voice being loving, forgiving, merciful, correcting, leading, gentle. It will confront rebellion, but not in a harsh and demanding way. He always offers the solution. He does not heap shame and condemnation, but he will continue to keep his finger on the issue. Yes, he will. Um, it's authoritative, but not necessarily loud, and it will be personal to you and speak in a way that you recognize and understand. Okay, so here we go with the divine impressions thing. Um, so it could be some things just put in your heart. We have an example of that in Nehemiah 7, 5 that God put it in my heart to gather the nobles and the rulers to do the registration by genealogy. Something's just put in your heart. Like, I just feel like God put this in my heart. Okay. Check um, on so-and-so. Yeah. Yeah, go call so-and-so. Yeah. Or yeah. whatever. Um, a thought that was, or yeah, I wanted to write you, I want you to write this sermon. Or yes. let's talk about that next week. <laughs> 
um, a thought that was not our own and is a godly indirection. It may come out of the blue or it may come in prayer or when you're reading the word, but it's just like, I probably wouldn't have thought of that on my own. You know? um, seeing visions and pictures in the Old Testament, they were called seers. Um, there's some examples of that in 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel, 2 Kings and several others. Uh, prophets were pretty much seers, seers were prophets, but God uses mental and actually open vision pictures sometimes to direct us. He still does that. Let me give you an example. So Malik struggles with how he hears from God different than other people. So one of the guys delivered some new life was prompted by Malik having a vision of somebody coming at that man with a baseball bat. So he had a vision of that happening. Uh, he didn't hear God's voice, but he saw the impression. So when he released what he had saw to the man, the man's like, oh Lord, how did you know that? Because the prophetic words are to lift up people, to increase their faith, because it's only by faith that anything happens. So he saw that, released it to the guy, and then the next thing you know, the guy's laid out over here, getting set free from this guy. So if you see a mental picture, um, it's okay to ask the Lord, well, do I release that? What are you trying to say? Before you just blurt it out. No, absolutely, <laughs> no. Because I get a lot of words and a lot of stuff like that, and then I just pray about it, and then within a few days, the person I got the word for, is reaching out to me. I've had that happen. Yeah, so he may be just giving you direction right. for somebody else, but it doesn't necessarily mean you you have to release it right then. And the Holy Spirit will kind of prompt you on on that. You know, you have to trust him. I see stuff all the time, but sometimes it's weird. Like I don't know what to do with it. You know, so it's not always going to be real clear. Uh, pray through that if it's kind of vague. Okay. But if you see a picture while you're praying with somebody, that's usually the word. Okay. And just say, hey, I see a man coming in with a baseball bat. What does that mean to you? Okay. Wow. Um, if, you know, we have a Peter example of Peter in the trance, saw the vision, and then he heard God speak. Um, so he may speak in the vision, he may not. You may have a vision in a dream. That's pretty cool. That happens. Um, Number 12, hear now my words. If there's a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak to him in a dream. Okay, well, he still does that. Lots of examples of dreams. Dreams is another way God speaks. Many references to God giving direction in dreams in the Old and the New Testament. Sometimes they're prophetic. Sometimes they're warning. Sometimes they're correction. Or comfort it could be a call to prayer to give you wisdom um, sometimes it's just because we won't listen when we're awake because our spirit never sleeps I would encourage everybody if you're not dreaming now ask God to start giving you dreams and keep paper by your bed to write stuff down because you will forget you know just jot down what it was it was if, if it's a supernatural dream from God, you're not going to forget. But there are a lot of times where you get little brief snippets. Um, like I had one the other day, and if I hadn't written it down, and I put it by the bed and walked away, and like two weeks later, I went back and was like, oh, yeah, I had totally forgotten about it. You know, so uh, then I had to bring it up to somebody that it involved with and, and kind of talk with them about it. Um, so then another way God can speak is in prophetic worship. Revelation comes in worship and in song. That's evident all through the Psalms. Um, in 2 Kings 3.15, Elijah said, bring me now a musician. And it happened when the musician played that he heard the hand of the Lord came upon him and he prophesied. So, and also spiritual warfare happens in worship and praise. We've seen many examples of that in 2 Chronicles 20 and Psalm 149. So there's a lot of things God can say in worship. Uh, you can get downloads from heaven while you're worshiping. You know, that happened to me one time. I was praising God on Wednesday night and out of nowhere, he's like, I need you to teach on overcoming anxiety and depression. And I was like, 
what? <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> you know, depression. Oh, no. But that's what he told me. And he started telling me all this stuff. I had to sit down and write it down. I was going to forget it, you know? Okay. Then um, there's hearing an inner voice, your own spirit. There's a spirit in man, and the breath of the Almighty gives him understanding. The spirit, of, that's Job 32 eight, Proverbs 20, verse 27. The spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inner depths of his heart. Wait, I think I talked about this before. Your spirit man is completely pure and right before God, connected with the Holy Spirit all the time, never sleeps. It doesn't fail. Okay, You can trust your spirit man. You have a voice. Your spirit has a voice, and that voice is directly connected with God. Your soul has a voice, too. That's where your mind, thoughts, emotions, will all get spin around in your head. Listening to the inner voice, this voice of your spirit, will help direct you, too, because you're hearing from the Holy Spirit there in your spirit man. Um, you can also hear God through a visitation. Um, there were... Plenty of examples in the Bible where the angels of the Lord came to the people before and after the cross. Um, be careful with that on YouTube, too. Um, if any angel, you know, Paul wrote, even if anyone or even an angel of God comes and presents to you a different gospel, let them be accursed. If, and I've heard, you know, testimonies about people saying that some beautiful angel came to them and told them blah, blah, blah. One example is the angel Moroni of the Jehovah Witnesses, whatever, <laughs> told them blah, 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 and it was not scriptural. Or it was going against what God had already told them before. And they said, you know, the, the scripture says to test the spirits. Uh, and, and they said, um, do you confess that Jesus came in the flesh? Because that comes out of uh, 1 John. It says the spirit of Antichrist will deny that Jesus came in the flesh. And that's how you know the spirit of error versus the spirit of truth. And that thing could not say it. And he answered again. He said, tell me if Jesus came in the flesh as the Son of God. And it vanished. So don't think that Satan won't try to come to you as an angel of light. Wow. Okay. Uh, divine revelation, a knowing, a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom. Jesus moved in every single gift of the Spirit. When you read through everything he said, he moved in the full fivefold ministry, and he moved in all of the gifts of the Spirit. Um, so sometimes you just know that. I just know this by the divine revelation. Perception, discernment. Um, I perceive that. You know, you discern something going on with someone, or you discern a specific spirit on them. We've seen examples of that in deliverance. Um, you feel impressions, like I feel pain in my side. Does anybody here have pain in their side? Um, you may feel um, a heaviness in your heart, like somebody here has contemplated suicide or something like that. God can give you those feelings in the moment of prayer. I've seen grace multiple times. Praying for people, because I think Josh Smith also, and they begin to feel the pain of the person's hurt. And then the Lord is dealing to them that, hey, they need to pray for that area. All of a sudden, the pain will come on them, and they'll know to pray for their back. Oh, I've seen that happen a couple of times. Amen. Yeah. So, do you want to try to do some. Explain a little bit about Friday night? Or... No, about uh, letting people practice um, yes. impressions. Yes. Yeah. I don't know how much time we have for much time we have. Okay. So let's get in a couple of little groups. In a one group here, one group here. If you want to practice, um, group we're group. gonna try to hear from God and minister to yeah, people in the group. group. Yeah, we could be in the group. Um and you're just going to pray and you're going to say, Lord, show me something for somebody in this group. And you're just going to take a leap of faith and we're all going to be gracious to one another. If you miss it, you miss it. But you're never going to know until you try. And I just ask the Holy Spirit to speak through you. If you see a picture, if you feel an impression or whatever, you hear something, just speak it. Emily, Mama, Sis, and Liar. Well, you're a person in
Great. Great. Sorry. Yeah. Y'all get there up in a little group, and what, what we're going to do, we're just going to pray, and then we're going to ask the Lord for just a word and or a vision or something like that. Uh, and then if you get that word, you say, hey, does this mean something to anybody? Find your group. Uh, uh, and why can't I remember? Greg, find you, get over here and go pray with somebody. So find your group. We want, we want to, we want to, the way that you get good at anything is practicing. Hallelujah. So get back here with Dale, Josh. Ken, get with Dale. Uh, so just uh, up here is one group. I'll do one over here. We have another group over here, so you're not all talking over it. Yeah, we, right right yeah. we got a whole middle. <laughs> and hey, just so you know, none of us are perfect. What, what I'm was still wrong with this myself. Yeah, what was wrong with that? We're practicing hearing for, from God for people. So whatever impression you may get, get in a group and we're just going to release word to bless people the best we can. we got to practice somehow. All right, let's pray. Let's pray. One group here, one group there, one group there, whatever you want to do. Are y'all going to have a group? Who are we praying for? One another. We're praying to get words from the word, Lord. We're practicing, practicing just in groups. Just practicing your group. Y'all want to come over here? Father, we come to you and we come to you and we come to you. Give us a word of information. Thank you. 
John, I wouldn't say this. Uh, I didn't get this uh, like right now, but the other day, the reason why I asked you because I seen you like this preaching, you know. So, so I seen you on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. God is giving you the word, buddy. You better listen. I love you with all my heart. I think it's a salt. It's a salt. This is not about provision. Not just his kingdom assigned to free God opened the door for his kingdom assigned. We see a period of transition. And we know the enemy of time so you're in time to transition. We pray for him to be single minded. Single minded. A son first, then a husband, <laughs> then a brother. And then the men got keeping in order. Yeah, amen. That's cool. Yeah, it is. Yeah. That's right. God prepares the Lord to see the sin of the free God I've ever seen God do that. For your kid, God, I'm stretching. All the chasing. I'm feeling you. 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 I'